that. Sometimes it's also um, that a judge has a contract for a couple of years, so it may be that you have to continue that mm -hmm. court until Grandfather the judges, that judge judge right, and then just have it mm -hmm. dissolve or change or or call it a different mm -hmm. name. And or what about the school district? Yeah. School districts are a little harder because the law is is there is a law that you can. Um, the, the public can vote on whether to combine school districts, but it has to come from both boards. So each each board of education has to say, I want to go to the public and ask them if they want to combine. But the voters of each district have to, unless it's uh, some kind of super mandate that uh, is created from the state that does not yet exist, and right. it's pretty problematic whether it will since it can't seem to do a lot of other things, but why would it take on the Garrison Union Free School District? Uh, well, there was a proposal actually through uh, Tom Swazi and the commission right. uh, for, for reform um, to say that a school district of a certain size has to merge, mm -hmm. but you'd have to pass legislation on a right. state level so it has to, be a to mandate. do that. No, short of that then... And we're not in favor of mandates anymore. People okay. don't want mandates, so, so that's if that So if it's <laughs> unlikely this will be imposed from on high, the, the, uh, the way to the path to consolidation would mm -hmm. have to lead through uh, the majority of uh, taxpayers in each district. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have to start the process. I would say, if I lived here, I, I would ask each board to um, update the study that they had done a number of years ago. I think there was a study done. Yep. And, and now look at it again and say, look, the climate is different. I think this is, I think this is probably the worst economic climate that we've mm -hmm. had for you know, decades. Yep. So maybe people's maybe visions that will, that might be a little different. Change. And if there's a way to combine administration, one of the things I want to do is start to work with BOCES mm -hmm. about taking over the business offices mm -hmm. of, of the school districts in, in northern Westchester and Putnam County. That has subtlety because it doesn't involve inst formal institutional change. Right. It doesn't involve any identity loss. The, the, right. the, the Panthers and the Cougars or right. whatever can still be Panthers and right. Cougars. Right. None of that. You sort of work right. around it through things that people don't aren't even aware of. Right, absolutely. You always have to, people say you have to take the, the low-hanging fruit, the one, the one that is easier to mm -hmm. do, that you have less emotion around. I had a meeting, uh, one of my town meetings was in Croton, and I had a lot of people yelling at me about, basically it was about Austin, Austin. How mm -hmm. could you even sign a petition to dissolve the village? Mm -hmm. um, so I realized then how much emotion we are going to have on all these issues. I think in, in Greenberg, they're trying to, in Greenberg and Westchester, they're trying to combine the fire departments, and uh, there was almost a fist fight over this. So I think it's, it's we difficult. We have four volunteer fire departments who have their own uh, sort of loyalty. And we were talking earlier before we started about the, uh, what almost seems to be a change in the level of emotion and the role mm -hmm. emotion seems to be playing in civil and civic uh, affairs and discourse. Do you think that is affecting uh, the ability of people like yourself to cause things to happen? Well, I think I just have to deal with it. I, I, I can't walk back and say I'm not going to deal with the topic because people are emotional and angry. If I feel that it's the right direction to go, I think we just have to keep pursuing it. I'm going to have to, you know, make my shoulders even stronger, I guess, yeah. to accommodate that. But I get you go back and, and you say, okay, you know, if people, you know, it's, it, once you understand the emotions, like um, one of the people in my community said, well, then you wouldn't have a village fire department if you dissolve the village. Well, is it wrong to have a town fire department? There isn't one now. It, you know, what is the real problem? And is it just historical and, and, but there's no real change if that were to occur? So I think you have to, you have to take the problems that come through the emotions, try to, try to study them, and, and do the pros and cons, and, and get that out to the public. It has to be a lot of education of the public. And then at the end of the day, if there's a vote on are we going to keep this or that, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's going to go up or down, and, and people have to sell it. You really have to sell consolidation just like you sell candidates running mm -hmm. for office. It's, it's an election. It's, it's a campaign. Uh, it's a campaign on issues. Well, we've seen that starting with something like a traffic light involves you know, one in very complex interactions of mm -hmm. government at different levels. And people now you take a broader question like consolidation seems to have a certain logic when you first approach it, as you mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. into it. 
um, mm -hmm. it opens many, many things and becomes uh, not such a simple matter, even though the economics of it may be compelling. Mm -hmm. Let's move then even to the last stage up, uh, which is our state government itself, which you've right. spent a considerable amount of time. I don't think anybody would uh, advance the proposition uh, that it's functioning uh, extremely well, efficiently, um, uh, with comedy and direction and a sense of principles and issues ahead of all other things. Mm -hmm. uh, now you add uh, to that an increasingly polarized uh, political approach, and then you have an underlying anxiety in the electorate uh, uh, about taxes, about their own economic mm -hmm. situation, and anxiety translates into anger relatively easily. Um, uh, you've been thinking mm -hmm. about it, working about it, you have to deal with it every day. Is there any hope? There's got to be hope because we have right, to be reason positive. To, let me about rephrase it. Is there well, a reason to hope? There's a reason to hope because, first of all, we'll have a governor hopefully for four years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has been very problematic in New York State to yeah. have had the, the change in the governor over that period of time. And, and you know, we were on a good mission, I thought, with Elliot Spitzer as governor. Um, and then, you know, when that didn't work, it, it just mm -hmm. kind of chaos reigned. But we're also as good as the people that are elected to office. And we've had some people, um, both in the Senate mm -hmm. and the Assembly, yeah. that have not done ethical things. Mm -hmm. And so that has been problematic. So that gives us... You know, people think negatively mm -hmm. of us when, whenever somebody does something sure. wrong. And um, well, at least New York can't claim to be unique. Uh, in that. We're not. We no, have, I was we, just we hearing about Illinois New Jersey. And and New Jersey, and we have a lot of other competition there. It's not, good. It's but, not right. Yeah, but we're it's not fighting not right. for a place at the top right. at the moment. Right. But that that makes people don't, people don't feel comfortable right. about their government leaders. Mm -hmm. So we need good government, ethical government leaders. But we need to work together, and that is one of the problems. Yeah, problem. If your primary work... loyalty as an elected official is somewhere in you to a group of people outside, the, to a cause right. or to a movement or to something, not to the government itself and making right. it work, uh, it becomes even more difficult. It's really, it's really hard, and I think it has gotten so partisan at every level. I try myself personally as a committee chair you know, to, to function in a very nonpartisan way with everybody on my committee and, and, and to work with people to recraft bills, mm -hmm. to get them moving, sure. and so Which on. Which is the classic way that effective uh, committee chairman and legislature have worked. Let me ask you right. then, uh, have you noticed a, 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 any change in, in people's willingness to be chaired um, in recent years? To be... To, to let the chairman be a chairman, or the chairwoman yes. be a chairwoman well, and actually, do this. Because uh, the chairwoman uh, right. wants to do this, that's their role, right. uh, and you get one like yourself who wants to reach right. out. But if they don't want to be chaired, right. Um, right. and they would prefer to disrupt, then it's much more it's difficult. It's hard. I, I actually think there probably should be more rotation of, of chairs of different committees so uh -huh. that, um, you know, if you have a committee with the, with the chairperson that just won't entertain certain mm -hmm. issues, that at least y you can change that around. And, um, you know, I, I think that would be very, very helpful. It takes away some of the excuse for resistance, too. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, um, I mean, we've made some changes in the Assembly where uh, we have to have committee meetings every month. We have to have hearings on the budget. Mm -hmm. Um, so those have been rather helpful. I think what we need to do, the one part I, I am concerned about is there are some bills that, um, uh, you know, just, just public financing of campaign that you have a huge number of people on, but they don't always get out for a vote. Mm -hmm. and, and back to that, you know, I know the public isn't really interested in having their tax dollars help people run for office. <laughs> But I think they don't understand how important that actually is, mm -hmm. because then you're not beholden to right. the teachers' union right. or the business your source community or whatever. Right. You, you, you know, most people. I mean, they're going to still be the millionaire that's going to spend his own money, mm -hmm. but he's probably not. She or she is not beholden right. to anybody. Right. But for those people that have to raise money um, and and get it from these sources. There is an attachment, an alliance, there's, there's something that isn't good. And, and I think if we did have public financing campaign, which, which Maine has done, uh, clean campaigns, uh, Connecticut has started, um, that we would be better off in the long run on the legislation that happens, mm -hmm. maybe getting rid of the bottlenecks, and also uh, downsizing the role of the lobbyists and all, because they are very, very strong.
as a result of uh, the campaigns being so expensive, right. uh, people have to start worrying about funding their next campaign uh, mm -hmm. because they may be challenged uh, with, by someone with right. great personal wealth, so they have to begin this uh, early. Right. And it's just a sad fact that folks are unlikely to contribute substantial amounts to political mm -hmm. campaigns who have no interest whatsoever. Right. Well, America. you can see up in Albany, I actually have the bill on uh, banning fundraisers in Albany when we're in session. Mm. I think that's a good idea. I haven't been able to get <laughs> much support for that, <laughs> although one of the candidates running for governor has put that in his package, so that's really good. But that's but, where it starts. But that's where it starts, because you yeah. see the lobbyists. Mm -hmm. I mean, people would they should come up and you know, spend time with me mm -hmm. up there. But you would see at all these parties, the lobbyists, you know, $200, one, and this yeah, one, $200, $200, sure. $200. And you know that there are issues being discussed that relate to those sure. lobbyists. A lot of meatballs. Well, right? in any case, um, thank you. This has been a uh, very engaging and helpful and, uh, conversation, mm -hmm. um, informative. Is there anything you would like to uh, uh, tell Phillipstown uh, folks, taxpayers, citizens, residents, we all know you anyway, but uh, uh, we see you all the time, and you're, it's amazing. I don't know how you are here, frankly, as much as you are and as locally engaged as you are, and still have Ossining, Peekskill, Cortland, uh, <laughs> a whole lot of people. Uh, it's, very, it's very impressive. So anyway, in our, in our little uh, uh, slice of heaven here, is there anything you want to... It is a slice of heaven. I think it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful town. And you're so lucky to have the Hudson River and the mountains and everything else. It's great. Um, I try to be every place. It's, it's you know, it's not. I, I don't prioritize any place. Yeah. But I must say that Phillipstown probably has more events than uh, most of the other communities in my district. And when you think about the fact that you're so small and you have all these events, you keep me really busy. Great. Well, it's been a great <laughs> pleasure to speak to one of the six Sandy Galefs who are actually at any one time, <laughs> like Santa Claus is at Christmas, out representing us. But in fact, there really is only one. And it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank Thanks you for very coming. much. Okay. Bro. See you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.